Here to review, um, react to my boy Bumps the Night's scary story, Dark Disney Secrets, The Black Hole in Space Mountain. Let's get it, let's go. I've been a Disney cast member for about four years now. It's far from the worst job I've ever worked at. It has great perks, offers housing, and the food is pretty bomb as hell. Despite all the perks and benefits, I'm still looking for new work. Things have gotten a bit too strange for my liking. Enough so that at this point, I'm more than ready to leave it all behind. What could be so strange about the happiest place on Earth? Well, where do I begin? I could tell you about Room Zero, or maybe what happens to the central board members after they kick the bucket. It's all pretty heavy stuff. We'll cover my own personal recollection of what happened to me recently. Let's start with the disappearances. More or less, the guests who unknowingly took their last ride at a theme park built around a mouse. So from time to time, things would vanish at Disney. Seems legit, people lose stuff more often than they like to admit. Well, in this instance, the thing that gets lost is sometimes not so much a thing as it is a person. Thousands of people pour through the park gates daily. Does it really seem so strange that a few don't make it out? Now, I'm not talking about the 2% of our guests that pass while visiting us. Yes, that really does happen sometimes. Families come in for a fun-filled vacation and grandma or grandpa can't stand the Florida heat. For this instance, I'm talking about a particular ride. So once in a while, a family goes on the ride... And one of their items that is placed in the stowaway compartments of the ride vanishes when they get off. Yet there's also those few and far between times where the items don't go missing at all. What goes missing are the people themselves. Crazy, right? Sounds made up? I know, but it's not. So I've heard these stories before, and I thought it was all total bullshit. Yet sometimes there's things in life you just can't explain. And you have to see it to believe it. This happened three weeks ago on a Thursday morning. I was stationed to work on Space Mountain for my shift. I didn't mind working the ride as out of the entire theme park known as the Magic Kingdom, Tomorrowland was the coolest spot you could work. I don't geek out too much, but sci-fi is kind of my thing, so I always felt right at home here. Well, I showed up for my shift and I performed the standard safety checks. They require we do this every day before opening the park. Each attraction needs to be ran once without riders and a second time with someone as a volunteer to make sure it's safe for the public. I know, I know, before you even start typing the question, is this even ethical, I told you before, Disney offers a very good benefits package. So, even if, in the event we were ever hurt, there would be a major compensation on our end. It was a win-win, or so I thought at the time. Now, for those of you who have never been to Disney, or even know what Space Mountain is, the best way I can describe it, hmm, a large indoor roller coaster that runs in total darkness. It's got a really awesome retro space-themed track. You add in a couple drops and you got yourself an all-time classic roller coaster that's withstood the test of time itself. So that Thursday morning, I volunteered to ride the coaster for the safety check. I've done this countless times prior, only this time things felt different. As I pulled out of the station in my rocket-shaped cart, I put my hands behind my head and prepared for the drop. Only this time, right before I reached the first drop, there was a blinding flash of light. I thought maybe they had installed a second camera or moved the photo op. This could have been a new feature for a before and after photo souvenir. It's hard to describe, but the first major drop lasted way longer than it should have. I gripped the safety bar in front of me, as every instinct I had told me I was in danger. Now, when you're on Space Mountain, the ride should last about four minutes, but this wasn't the case. I just kept dropping and dropping. All I could think is, I'm going to die. I was trapped in the perpetual motion of a freefall. It lasted so long that the music they play on a continuous loop had fallen silent. It was pitch black. I couldn't see my hands on the bar or even a trace of light whatsoever. Dread filled me to my very being as the stench of death and decay rose up and gripped itself within my nostrils. I began to hear a faint moaning sound. It was like the cries of hundreds being tortured. Was I in hell? Did I die on the ride and plunge straight into the black abyss of the afterlife? I began to feel cold, like... Like, we're talking frigid here, to where my face hurt just from the wind itself. I started to tear up and just wished for the crash already, as this was madness and I could not take another second of it. Then just as I felt myself start to black out, there was another flash of light. The next thing I knew, I was at the exit station of the end of the ride. Now, usually, when we test a ride, we stay in and pull all the way back around to the start and give our personal analysis. Not today. I dove out as fast as I could. I scrambled like someone in fear for their very life. I ran up to the screen where you can preview your photo taken during the ride. I looked over all the pics. I was nowhere to be seen in any of them. My boss came and found me frantically obsessing over the pictures and asked me what was wrong. 
I rambled on about how I got lost and went somewhere else. He kept trying to assure me it was my imagination, and this place had finally gotten to me. I wanted to protest, but I knew I was only going to look worse by doing so. My boss could tell I was uneasy and decided to give me the rest of the day off. On my way out, I took one of the many underground network tunnels we used to navigate the parks without guests seeing us. One of the staff trams pulled up to pick me up. I was looking rather shaken, and the tram driver asked me, So, young man, what did you see? My gaze widened as we locked eyes through his rearview mirror, and then he let out a subtle cackle. <laughs> uh, what, do you, what do you mean, sir? I asked nervously. He softly chuckled and then responded with, <laughs> The name's Mal, and I can tell when one of our own has seen one of the several nightmares that have attached themselves to the happiest place on earth. I sat on the tram silently, just waiting to see if this guy was fucking with me. So seeing is how I'm picking you up from the magic kingdom that eliminates about four-fifths of the list. Again, I stayed quiet, but my eyes squinted as I wasn't sure if he was messing with me or this was the person Disney brings in when you see something you shouldn't have. Mal then continued speaking. Hmm, so I know the gas scots roam all main four parks. That still leaves the ghost of Tom Sawyer's Island. The forbidden room in the haunted mansion? Hmm, seeing as you're dressed, I'd wager to guess you don't work in new fantasy land. With that assumption, we can eliminate the cries for help in It's a Small World, or the dark altar in Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Ah, Mal snapped his fingers and claimed. I got it. You work in Tomorrowland. So the question is, was it the androids who walk around the set of the Carousel of Progress, or was it the Black Hole in Space Mountain? Just the name of that ride sent shivers down my spine. I also made a face. Oh, I see. It was the Black Hole in Space Mountain. Mal said calmly. Yeah, that one. I said quietly and timid-like. Mal responded. Well, you should count yourself lucky if you went through it and came out alive. <laughs> really? I asked, somewhat skeptical. Yeah. I want to go into all the voices himself. He then went on to say, out of all amazing. the dark Disney nightmares to roam the mousescape, that one alone has claimed more lives than any other. How long has this been happening? I asked, concerned. Decades upon decades, my young friend, Mal said grimly. Some say this particular nightmare has a connection to Room Zero. Room Zero? I've heard stories about that area, but I thought that's all they were. Mal sighed and said, Ah, <sighs> oh boy, if only, if only they were. Dark zones are a thing of the past, but that sealed off area. Well, the decommissioned bomb shelter has never been more real. Okay, but what do the two have to do with each other? I asked, confused. Well, Mal said firmly. Do you know what manifestation is? Somewhat, I replied, still unsure. So think about it like this. There's a lot of positive energy entwined here. Opposites attract. Where there's good, there surely will be bad. So what if Walt Disney knew this even when building his massive mouse themed empire and maybe he made a place for the bad to manifest room zero now over time more and more of this bad energy slowly manifested as many of the other nightmares i've mentioned appeared i'm sorry i'm still not following how my experience is related to any of this i said a bit agitated well Room Zero is known to consume the living body, mind, and soul, Mal said in a dark growl. When Room Zero feeds, it reaches out into a place that's as dark as it is, Space Mountain. Sometimes it gets a taste and doesn't like what it's swallowed. In those rare occurrences, it spits them back out. Did you smell them? Smell them? W what do you mean? I asked rather confused. The guests who have been trapped there and are rotting in its foul pits of the evil's core. I could tell from the way Mal spoke he was not joking. Yes, sir, I said defeated. Well, lad, I recommend you count your blessings and start watching your back. What do you mean by that, Mal? 
I ask, rather concerned. Well, once Room Zero knows it's been found out about, it hunts those who put its great secrets at risk. This was starting to cross the borderline of insanity, I thought to myself. It's an amusement park, Mal. What could it possibly have planned? Mal shot me a sharp, concerned look through the mirror on the cart. I got the unspoken memo right then and there. I understand, sir. I'm planning on looking for new work after this experience today anyway. That wouldn't be the worst idea, kiddo. Mal responded. Just watch out for those gascots as I'm certain Room Zero will be using them to keep an eye on you now. As Mal finished his sentence, the tram pulled up to my stop's destination and he let me off. Be careful, kid. Mal cautioned. I will, Mal. Thanks for helping me clear up that I'm not crazy. Mal didn't look at me. You're not crazy, kid. He responded. Then he paused and said, Just remember, you're a marked one now, son. Wait, what? I asked, confused. Mal didn't say anything else. He just pulled away and disappeared around the corner. I've decided to share this experience with the internet in hopes that someone else may know anything about what I had experienced or what it means to be marked by Disney. I'm still looking for a new job, but I'll update you guys if I happen across anything else that pertains to these so-called Disney nightmares. Well, dear viewers, it looks like you've survived to the end of the terrifying tale. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to my story. If you did enjoy, maybe consider liking and subscribing, as there's always more spooky content just around the corner. And remember, my beloved viewers, you never know what goes bump in the night. <laughs>
to come here, me spit. Got the tooty in my lock. If you ain't bad, bitch.